Huge rebalances are on the way to old school RuneScape. Drop rates are changing, max hits are changing, item stats are changing, and right now, every single week, something huge is changing in old school RuneScape, and this week is no different. Welcome to another project rebalance item and evolution of combat adjustments. There's a lot in here to get stuck into. Some good, I think some bad bad as well. As ever, I'll quickly fill you in and I am on the beta world to test out these changes and give some opinions, some propaganda and some feedback about what's going on because there's a lot going on. As always, it's, it's getting faster. Change is coming to this 25 year old game but is it good change now the first item adjustment in this blog is an absolutely huge one the occult necklace it's been in the game for nearly 10 years now and the premise is the occult necklace is too strong for its cost and accessibility and as a result it leaves other magic gear in the dust when considering the magic combat style there are two stats that matter magic accuracy and magic damage magic accuracy sort of falls away for the most part because you generally are using magic Magic against things weak to magic and you're always hitting so your accuracy never comes into it too much this leaves us looking at magic damage for the most part when choosing gear and the occult has a big magic damage bonus of 10 percent and the argument here is that this has always been overtuned in comparison to other best and slot items in game like full ancestral is only six percent but the occult is 10 percent it's 800k and it's from a slayer mob this is a full set from a raid. So the idea is to take some of this magic damage from the occult and distribute it across other gear slots. In the main game, full ancestral and an occult is 16% magic damage. In the beta and the new proposal, full ancestral and occult is also 16% damage, but the occult is now only 4% magic damage rather than 10. All that magic damage has been resorted into the ancestral pieces. They're 4% magic damage each. But actually, there's extra magic damage sorted out of the occult in the form of the Augury Prayer. You now get a magic strength of 4%. So, best in slot mage just got a considerable amount better because of this. To be fair, I actually did think the occult was too strong for what it was, and I actually do want some redistribution amongst other gear slots. And it works well for max gear. But what if you don't have max gear? That's where this stuff starts to lose me a bit. I just don't think the occult's magic damage is redistributed to anywhere near the extent it should be. There's only a few extra armor sets that gain magic damage after this update. So to go down the magic robes in order, full ancestral is 12%, full vertus is a significant drop off to 6% with 9% ancients damage. So in this proposal, vertus is going to be worse than ancestral when casting ancients. That just doesn't make any sense whatsoever as that was basically the use for this armor. So that's a problem in my opinion. So then a step down from Virtus are three armor sets. We've got Third Age at a total of 3% magic damage. We've got Infinity also at 3% magic damage. And we also have Dagon High at 3% magic damage. And that's it. There are no more extra magic damage items, which I think is really poor considering we're losing our, on our 10% from this occult all over the game it just isn't redistributed hardly anywhere at all there's no sears ring there's no eternal boots percentage that we're getting there's no shields oh, there's, there are so many missed opportunities here remember that magic damage is the key stat we're going for with magic dps arims has nothing infinity is better than arims I don't think that makes any sense whatsoever. If we are going down redistributing the occult's magic damage, there should just be so much more redistribution than this. It's barely any armor sets. Third Age, who the hell's using that at any point in their progression? Dagon High takes ages to get. Infinity Robes. It just sort of, I don't know. It really doesn't sit well with me, this. In a traditional mage progression route, you'd get your Mystic early on. Then maybe you go to Barrows, get your Ariams, a well-loved piece of content. Or maybe you're new school and you come to Perilous Moons for a similar gear to Ariams. Actually, you don't do this fun, well-loved content anymore. Because now, the game is pushing you here! Mage Training Arena to get your magic damage, as that's the most important thing in the world for Infinity. And you're doing one of the most hated things in the game, as that's now part of the meta progression. Which I know, I know you don't have to do the meta, but why not have the meta be the fun stuff? And if you're a pure, you're screwed because your occult's gone, you can't use augury, elder has no percentage with it. At least give 1% to elder robes. I, th I don't know, I think surely... 
mystics as well have a base level of percentage that you're giving to a few different items around the game i think this design is definitely focused around just the end game of runescape and realistically how many people do run around looking like this is not too many at all i also think a massive trick missed here is we're all going on about are oh, the shadows so good yeah, it's going to be hard to keep the shadow in check because it's so end game but it's two-handed why not give some magic percentage to some shields to help balance out the mid game? The same with the prayer book. Augury is 4% magic damage, and that is not reflected in the other prayers at all. It'd be nice to see Mystic might get, pick up maybe 2%. 1% for Mystic Laws, so there is a bit more progression through them. One final note on crying about magic changes is it's going to feel quite bad because to get the extra 4%, you are going to have to turn on Augury, which is going to make your prayer drain in a lot of situations that you probably weren't noticing your prayer draining too much. It's a pretty minor thing, but it definitely will feel worse to play with, even if it's becoming more consistent with melee and range. So yeah, in theory, I support this if magic damage becomes more prevalent across more sources. But for now, yeah, it's a no from me, boss. The next combat change is also a pretty big one. Minimum hit adjustments. You might know that in RuneScape, when you hit a zero on a monster, not all zeros are the same. Some zeros are technically a real hit. This is especially prevalent when you use the Dragon Warhammer. You special attack, you hit a zero, but you've hit. So you get the defense reduction, but you don't know that you've hit. So then you have to spec again. It's also prevalent in the very early game when you're hitting an NPC, you're hitting a lot of zeros, which are technically passing the accuracy check because your max hit is only a one. So you roll zero or a one and you hit disproportionately more zeros than you'd expect. The solution to this and the minimum hit adjustment is that if you pass the accuracy check, you will guarantee at least one damage. Now, if you know anything about maths, that then increases your average hit, which increases your DPS across the entire game. So Jagex are implementing a new formula to bring down max hits by one to counteract this increase. I do really like the minimum hit being a one if you pass the accuracy check. That's amazing and I want to see that in the game, but I really dislike all max hits being taken down by one to counteract this. It's not even gonna be that much of a DPS increase across the game. Like, I think we can cope with it and my reasoning maybe it's just a bit petty but this turns the ice barrage max hits into 29 blitz and all these iconic parts of runescape are changing they've been like this for 20 plus years i also would rather i could still hit a successful zero and keep high max hits than lower the max hits and always hit ones. That's my personal take. This next change is a really good one. They're removing the auto cast delay when you click on an NPC. So there used to be one tick delay when clicking. Now it instantly casts like you're using a trident or something. I really, really like this change and it's good to get it in ahead of the elemental weaknesses. Then we move on here to the big Elder Maul. It's finally getting a buff after years and years of the merchants pestering Jagex. It now has a special attack. The special attack uses 50% special attack and is essentially a slightly buffed Dragon Warhammer special doing 35% defense reduction compared to 30% from the Dragon Warhammer. The Elder Maul is also more accurate and hits harder than the Dragon Warhammer. It has 135 crush bonus and 147 strength bonus compared to the Dragon Warhammer's 123 and 93 bonuses with the Avernic Defender. I really like this and I think it's a cool change to see the Elder Maul get some love. Oh my god, and look at the price graph. The merch has finally got their day. It's gone up from 44 mil all the way up to into the 80s. That's crazy. And if we go back over the past year, this thing used to be less than 10 mil. It is a mega rare, so it's nice to see it have some value. And speaking of the infamous Dragon Warhammer, they're doing something pretty unprecedented. They're changing the drop rate of this thing. It's going from the iconic 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 3,000, which is pretty damn significant. Now, I don't really know how to feel about this. I did go for a Dragon Warhammer on this account when it was an Iron Man back in the days of like 2017, and I got it in 3,000 kills. And then since then, I've just never really gone for it because it is such a potential huge time sink. Any League, Dead Man, Hardcore Iron Man, my pure, I've never even bothered because it just seems like a long while. So it's hard for me to talk on this without having bias because... Now it's 3k. I might go for it on my pure. <laughs> so like, oh, it sounds like a good idea to me, but it's been in the game at this rate for so long. It's a bit weird to go back and retrospectively change it. 
I'm kind of in the middle. I I'm obviously biased because I don't have them on pure. And I just I just want to go get one. And on the subject of the Dragon Warhammer, Creative Crafted are now selling them as LED signs. You can use my code SOLO. The link is in the description. This is a quick little shout out for them, but it's very on topic. There are also more changes coming to the Nightmare and Fasani's Nightmare. I swear there's been tons of changes to this over the years to try and make it anywhere near good. Long story short is they're making things slightly more common. So it's going to be 700 hours instead of 1,000 hours to get all your stuff. I'm really not a rare drop chaser, so I have no opinion on that, really. And they're also buffing Inquisitor and the Inquisitor Mace for, like, the fifth time. <laughs> like, yo, you're just not Torva, bro. Get over it. They're also coming for the Void Waker. No, Jagex, what are you doing? Everyone like, I think everyone likes this weapon. They basically want to change it so it's no longer guaranteed to hit, which I thought was the main point of the Void Waker. So you're going to have reduced accuracy. I don't like this, to be honest. I think the Void Waker does fit into the special attack meta alongside a bunch of other options, which are all still used plenty. On top of that, it's been in the game for one year. We literally voted at the polls to bring this Void Waker in and Jagex, the dictator, the authoritarian, already wants to come and prize it out of our hands. We literally voted for it, mate. Let's keep it how it is, please. The Ancient God Sword is also kind of getting a nerf. A bit of a nerf in PvP, not so much in PvM. It still works largely the same where you get healing, but now it's based on your opponent's hit points level. So a Mammoth, I've got the full amount there because it has enough hit points to draw from. But from a player, you will now only heal 15 while dealing 25 damage compared to the old 25 and 25. Soul Reaper Axe is also getting easier to use. As you know, you get eight damage for building up your stacks. But the problem was these stacks were really annoying to maintain. If you swapped weapons, you would lose your stack. But now you keep them which is really, really nice. They so can switch into a special attack weapon. The stacks also now take a lot longer to decay. And when they decay, you get healed the hit points that you would have lost, which is really nice. Makes this thing a lot more usable, really. Oh my God, are they changing the monkey room in TOA again? Again, I, before I get into this, I know they're making changes and they've made changes and changes and changes. But when you're in this position, would it not just be better to make a new puzzle? They are persistent at making us do this. I give them that. I mean, I'm I'm with the opinion it's not too terrible, but it just doesn't fit in with the other puzzle rooms. It's a combat room. It's just really out of place in TOA. But the changes are good. The changes are good. You now max hit every single monkey that has a style associated, like in League. So the melees, I'm going to max hit with Shadow every single time. And it's like I've got Berserker on. So at long last, this room should feel a lot more smooth. Let's see, with melee, I bop the ranger. Oh, that is beautiful. And then the mage might be two taps of a blowpipe. No, it's not. It's one. Okay, this is going to be a lot nicer. One thing, though, is that you obviously don't max hit on the baboon shamans because they're typeless. I take it back. Maybe the monkey room solved. I don't even know. I still think it doesn't fit but we'll take it. Now, there are definitely some good changes in this vlog, but I think there are also a lot of unnecessary things contained within here. Not everything has to work out at some balanced utopia. In fact, the game's so old now, and even the Band-Aid fixes that were chucked in in 2014, 15, 16, like the occult, they've been an imbalance in the game for so long that the future of the game was designed around the imbalance. So it was balanced around imbalances. So now when you go and try and fix those original imbalances, are you not imbalancing the balance that was created from the original imbalances, if you see what I mean? <laughs> so you just gotta be careful about changing some of these things. And you really should be able to come back in a year's time to old school RuneScape and things remain largely the same. As I said in my last review video, the pace of everything changing is quick right now. And you do risk alienating people. You really, you really do. And maybe it makes me sound like a bit of a melodramatic RuneScape boomer, but I did quit in 2011. It wasn't because of any big update in particular. It was more of a death of a thousand cuts of things gradually changing. And soon the game was not what I signed up for. And it was completely different to what I thought RuneScape was. And even things as simple as Barrage Hinker 30 is RuneScape to me. Does changing stuff like this actually make the game 
more fun. What definitely is fun for me is you subscribing to the Mission Solo channel. We are on the second channel if you haven't noticed already. And our good friends over at Creator Crafted have a new drop with the Dragon Warhammer, the Wise Old Man LED sign, and a Colosseum mouse pad along with a Tumacan's Warden. You can get everything for 10% off using code SOLO. Use the link in the description. There's so much new stuff on there. Go and check it out. I guarantee you'll love it.